Hello everyone! In this video we're going to draw a condor. Start by drawing a circle as a guide for the top part of the body. To draw the circle, make two small marks to indicate the circle's length, and then on the sides make two more small marks to indicate the circle's width. Then connect the marks using curved lines to complete the shape of the circle. Sketch lightly at first so that it's easy to erase if you make a mistake. Also pause the video to draw at your own pace. The circle doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're having a hard time drawing it, just trace the outer edge of a coin or a bottle cap or anything else with a circular edge. Far down below the circle and to the left, make a small mark to start the guide for the lower half of the body. Then connect the mark to the circle using curved lines to form a big arc. Pay attention to where you first make the mark to determine the length of this guide. The overall shape of the guides should be similar to a big oval or an egg. Above the body, draw a small circle as a guide for the head. Use the four marks method to draw this circle too. The head circle should be about one fourth the size of the first circle. Condors have pretty long necks, so don't draw this circle too close to the body. On the right side of the head circle, draw a small arc as a guide for the beak. The arc should slope down slightly. Pay attention to the size of this arc in relation to the head. On the left side, draw a long curved line that connects the head to the body. This line should be wavy and similar in shape to the letter S. Under the beak, draw another long curved line as a guide for the rest of the neck. Under the body, on the right side, draw a long angled line as a guide for the first foot. This line is vertical at the top and then it curves down into the right at the bottom. To the right, draw a similar line as a guide for the other foot. The lines for the feet should be close together. On the lower left side of the body, add the guide for the tail by first drawing two vertical lines. Then close the shape at the bottom with a short curved horizontal line. And that's it for the guidelines. Now let's start on the final drawing. Inside the head, on the top right side, lightly sketch a small circle for the eye. When you get the size and position of the eye right, darken the lines, but make the sides a bit more pointy. Inside the eye, off to the side, draw a tiny circle for a highlight, and in the middle, draw a bigger circle and shade it in for the pupil. Don't overlap the tiny highlight circle as you draw the pupil in the middle. Draw a couple of curved lines around the eye for the eyelid and wrinkles. Starting on top of the head, lightly sketch a line that curves down to the beak for the comb, or crest. The shape of the comb should be thin and round on the sides. When you get the shape right, darken the line. At the bottom, draw a series of short curved lines for the base of the comb. Draw the base close to the edges of the guides. The base of the comb is basically made up of short lines that don't connect. Along the left side of the beak, draw a series of vertical lines for the loose skin called the wattle. Draw these lines below the eye and along the edge of the head circle and the top of the neck. Don't overthink these lines, just draw them randomly along the right side of the head. Now darken the top part of the small arc for the beak. Curve the line downward to create the tip of the beak. And then curve the line back inside the arc to create the mouth. Use a wavy line to draw the mouth. Darken the bottom part of the arc for the lower half of the beak. Now darken the top left side of the initial circle for the back of the head. On the left side of the head, draw a series of curved and wavy lines for the wrinkles and veins. 
These lines don't have to be perfect, just draw a few squiggly lines. Add some short lines at the bottom too for more wrinkles. Now draw a series of short strokes along the bottom edge of the circle for the fluffy neck feathers. Draw a long curved line at the bottom for the rest of the neck. On the left side of the head, draw a long curved line that's made up of short strokes for more of the fluffy neck feathers. Sketch the curved line lightly at first, and when you get the shape right, darken the line using short strokes. Now draw longer curved lines below the head for the longer neck feathers. Draw these longer curved lines along the edges of the guides for the neck. Use curved lines of different sizes for more variety on the feathers. Make the right side a bit wider than the original guides. Draw a few more short curved lines inside the shape for more neck feathers. Lightly sketch a very long curved line across the entire body for the folded wing. This line should start below the neck and then curve down across the entire body and end at the tail. Add a curved line on the left side for the outer edge of the folded wing. When you get the shape of the wing right, darken the lines. Pay attention to how wavy the line is at the bottom. Keep the left side of the wing close to the edge of the guide. Inside the wing, draw a couple of sloping curved lines for the pattern on the feathers. Use the angled line under the body and to the left as a guide to draw the first foot. Lightly sketch the shape of the foot along the top part of the guide. Sketch the shape of the first toe along the curved part of the bottom of the guide. At the tip of the toe, draw a pointy shape for the talon. When you get the shapes right, darken the lines. On top of the toe, draw another short curved shape for the other toe. Make the tip pointy for the talon. And then at the bottom, draw another thin curved shape for the other toe. Just like before, make the tip long and pointy for the talon. Now use the line on the right as a guide to draw the other foot the same way. First lightly sketch the shape of the foot around the guide. Then at the toe at the bottom. Make the shape of the toe thin and the tip pointy for the talon. A big part of this foot will be hidden behind the first foot, so only draw the visible section. Now use the remaining shapes and lines as guides to draw the rest of the body. Simply darken the outer edges of the guides to create the shape of the body. Make the lines for the body a bit wavier than the initial guides. Draw a series of vertical lines inside the shape of the tail for the individual feathers. Curve the bottom tips of each feather and make them different sizes. Draw a couple of sloping lines under the feet to create a rock. 
This will give the condor something to perch on so that it doesn't appear to be floating. Now erase the guidelines for a cleaner drawing. The next few steps are sped up so that the video won't be too long. Don't worry about erasing all of the guidelines, it's okay to leave some behind. Redraw any of the final lines that you may have accidentally erased. Now shade your drawing. Condors have dark feathers, but shade lightly at first and gradually build up to a darker value. Shade the body except for the lower half of the wing. For a light value, push very lightly on your pencil, and then push harder for a darker value. Use a medium value for the head, and then add shadows using a darker value. Pick a light source when you're shading so that the shadows are consistent throughout the body. Here the light source is coming from the top, so the shadows are going to be mainly on the underside of the shapes. Shading can be time consuming, so be patient and take breaks. Draw a series of dark vertical lines inside the wing for the pattern on the feathers. The wing should have two big rows of vertical lines for the feathers. It's a good idea to use reference as you shade for a more accurate depiction of a condor. The fluffy neck feathers and the feathers on the lower half of the wing are white, so use a light value there. Use a light value for the top part of the wing for a highlight. Use a medium value for the feet, but add a darker value for the shadows. Do the same thing for the rock. Use a medium value, but use a darker value for the shadows. Keep shading until you're happy with the result. And that's it for the condor. Don't forget to pause the video to draw at your own pace. Also please visit howtodrawanimals.com where every step of this tutorial is broken down into an individual image. That's how, and then the number two, then drawanimals.com. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. Also subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep drawing.